Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the top places you absolutely must visit in the beautiful city of San Francisco. We're talking iconic bridges, notorious prisons, and enough sourdough bread to satisfy your inner carb monster. I'm talking clam chowder bowls you can practically swim in. This city is a whirlwind of culture, delicious food, and sights so stunning they'll make your jaw drop. Seriously, watch out for falling jaws, it's a hazard here. So grab your coffee, sit back, relax, and let's get started. First up, we've got the big one, the main attraction, the superstar of San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge. This bridge is so iconic, it's practically got its own fan club. And let's be real, those orange towers against the blue sky? Total Instagram gold, I bet you could take a shot from any angle and it'll still rack up those likes. Don't even get me started on the sunset shots. Pure magic. But seriously, this bridge isn't just a pretty face. This engineering marvel is a testament to human ingenuity, spanning over a mile and a half. Now I'm not saying you have to take a selfie with the Golden Gate, but who are we kidding? You're gonna take a selfie. Just promise me you'll put the selfie stick down for a minute and actually soak in the view, all right? Take a walk, feel the breeze, and maybe contemplate life's big questions. Or, you know, just enjoy not being stuck in traffic on the bridge for once. Because trust me, the traffic here is no joke. Speaking of traffic, did you know it's estimated that over 10 million cars cross this bridge every single year? That's a whole lot of people trying to get somewhere. All right, from one icon to another, we're heading over to Alcatraz Island. Now this place is a little less Golden Gate glam and a little more chills down your spine history. This former prison, sitting right in the middle of the bay, housed some of the most notorious criminals in American history. Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, the Birdman, they all called this rock home. Talk about an exclusive guest list, right? Though I'm not sure exclusive is the right word when you're talking about a prison. You can take a ferry over, explore the cell blocks, and just imagine what life was like for the inmates and guards who lived here. And trust me, you will feel the history in those walls. Some say the island is haunted, with whispers of past residents echoing through the halls. I don't know about ghosts, but the stories alone are enough to give you goosebumps. Escape attempts, solitary confinement, the constant crashing of waves against the rocks. It's the stuff of movies. Just a little tip stick with the tour group, all right? Don't want anyone accidentally getting lost and spending the night. The last thing I want is to have to call up the Coast Guard and explain that you wandered off looking for ghosts. They've got enough to worry about. All right, let's talk Fisherman's Wharf. This place is a sensory overload in the best way possible. You've got the smell of salt in the air, the sound of street performers, and the sight of, well, a whole lot of tourists. But hey, we're all tourists here, right? The main attraction here is obviously the seafood. I'm talking fresh crab, steaming bowls of clam chowder in sourdough bread bowls, fish and chips that'll make you wanna slap your mama. It's a seafood lover's paradise. Just be prepared to fight off some feathery friends for your lunch. The seagulls here are fearless, man. I swear they've got their own zip code and they ain't afraid to swoop down and snatch a french fry right out of your hand. My advice, embrace the chaos. Grab some grub, find a bench with a view and enjoy the show. Just keep an eye on your food unless you wanna share your lunch with a seagull with a serious case of the munchies. Now, Fisherman's Wharf isn't just about the food, even though that's a pretty big part of it. There's a ton of other stuff to see and do here. You can check out the historic ships at the Hyde Street Pier, visit the Musée Mécanique with its vintage arcade games, or even hop on a boat tour to Alcatraz. Speaking of boats, one of the coolest things about Fisherman's Wharf is that you can actually see the infamous Alcatraz Island from there. It's a little creepy knowing that such a notorious prison sits just across the water, but hey, it makes for some interesting scenery. If you're feeling adventurous, you can even take a ferry over to the island and take a tour of the former prison. Just, uh, maybe don't ask for the Wi-Fi password while you're there. 
So yeah, Fisherman's Wharf is definitely a must-see when you're in San Francisco. Just be prepared for crowds, seagulls, and a whole lot of deliciousness. All right, time to escape the hustle and bustle of the city and enter a world of peace, tranquility, and, well, maybe a few too many tourists taking selfies with trees. But hey, that's part of the charm, right? I'm talking about Golden Gate Park, people. This place is huge. It's like a green oasis in the middle of the urban jungle. I mean, seriously, it's bigger than Central Park in New York City. Imagine that, a park so vast you could get lost in it. You could easily spend an entire day here and still not see everything. There's just so much to explore and enjoy. You've got museums, gardens, lakes, even a windmill. It's like a treasure trove of attractions waiting to be discovered. It's like they took all the best parts of a city park and crammed them into one giant green space. Every corner you turn, there's something new and exciting. One of my favorite spots in the park is the Japanese tea garden. It's a little slice of tranquility amidst the hustle and bustle. It's this super serene oasis with bonsai trees, koi ponds, and of course, a tea house where you can get your matcha fix. The ambiance is just perfect for unwinding. It's the perfect place to chill out, find your zen, and maybe contemplate the meaning of life, or just scroll through Instagram for a bit. Either way, it's a win. Just a heads up though, Golden Gate Park is so big that it's easy to get lost in. Seriously, bring a map or have your phone's GPS handy. I'm talking like, seriously lost. It's a labyrinth of greenery and pathways. I once spent an hour wandering around trying to find my way back to the main road. It was an adventure, to say the least. It was like being in an episode of Lost, except without the polar bears and mysterious smoke monsters. But hey, that's part of the fun, right? Getting lost in nature, discovering new spots, and making memories. But hey, getting lost can be part of the fun, right? There's something magical about wandering aimlessly and stumbling upon hidden gems you never expected to find, especially when you're surrounded by so much natural beauty. Every corner you turn reveals a new breathtaking view, making the journey as delightful as the destination. And trust me, there's no shortage of natural beauty in Golden Gate Park. The park is a sprawling oasis, offering a serene escape from the hustle and bustle of city life from the colorful flowers in the Conservatory of Flowers to the towering trees in the Redwood Grove, this place is a feast for the eyes. The vibrant colors and towering giants make you feel like you've stepped into another world. And if you're looking for something a little more active, Golden Gate Park has got you covered there too. Whether you're an adrenaline junkie or just looking to stretch your legs, there's an activity for everyone. You can go for a bike ride, have a picnic, rent a paddle boat on Stowe Lake. The options are endless and each one offers a unique way to experience the park. You can even go horseback riding. Imagine trotting along scenic trails, feeling the gentle breeze and the rhythm of the horse beneath you. It's like a choose your own adventure park. No matter what your interests are, you'll find something that captures your imagination and keeps you entertained. Just uh, maybe avoid trying to ride the bison. They might look friendly, but they're definitely not meant for riding. I hear they're not very friendly. It's best to admire these majestic creatures from a safe distance and respect their space. So yeah, if you're looking for a break from the city or you just want to experience a different side of San Francisco, make sure you add Golden Gate Park to your list. It's a perfect spot to unwind and reconnect with nature. Just maybe bring a map or at least download Google Maps on your phone. You'll thank me later. Navigating such a vast park can be tricky, but with a little help, you'll be exploring like a pro in no time. All right, buckle up, Buttercup, because we're about to enter a whole other world. A world where every corner you turn offers a new surprise, a new delight for your senses. A world of bustling markets, delicious smells, and enough red lanterns to light up the entire city. The vibrant colors and intricate designs of these lanterns are a feast for the eyes. That's right, we're talking about Chinatown, baby. A place where tradition meets modernity in the most fascinating ways. San Francisco's Chinatown is actually the oldest and largest Chinatown outside of Asia, so you know it's gonna be good. This place is steeped in history with every building and street telling a story. As soon as you step foot into this neighborhood, you're hit with a wave of sights, sounds, and smells that are unlike anything else you've ever experienced. It's like stepping into a different world, one that's both familiar and exotic. 
You've got vendors selling everything from fresh produce to souvenirs, the aroma of incense and spices filling the air, and the sound of Cantonese chatter all around you. It's a sensory symphony that plays out every day. It's a full-on sensory overload in the best way possible. My advice? Embrace it. Let yourself be swept away by the energy and excitement. Just go with the flow. Let your curiosity guide you through the narrow streets and hidden alleyways. Wander down the narrow streets, pop into shops that catch your eye, and don't be afraid to try something new. Whether it's a quirky souvenir or a delicious street food snack, there's always something to discover. You might just discover your new favorite snack, find a hidden gem of a store, or stumble upon a traditional lion dance performance. These unexpected moments are what make Chinatown so special. So take your time, soak it all in, and enjoy the ride. Speaking of trying new things, you absolutely cannot come to Chinatown without experiencing the food. I'm talking about authentic Chinese food that will make your taste buds sing. And when it comes to Chinatown eats, you've got to start with dim sum. Picture this. Steaming baskets piled high with dumplings, buns, and other savory treats, all wheeled around on carts by friendly servers. It's a culinary adventure, and you get to choose your own destiny, or at least your own dumplings. But Chinatown isn't just about the food, although it's a pretty big part of it. There's also a rich history and culture to explore here. You can visit temples, learn about traditional Chinese medicine, or even catch a Chinese opera performance. Just be prepared to navigate some serious crowds, especially on weekends and holidays. It's like trying to navigate a maze, except the walls are made of people, and the reward at the end is a delicious plate of noodles. But hey, that's all part of the Chinatown experience, right? All right, so you've done the Golden Gate Bridge, you've survived Alcatraz, hopefully. You've stuffed your face at Fisherman's Wharf. Now it's time to hit up the shopping mecca of San Francisco, Union Square. This place is like the Times Square of shopping, but, you know, with better weather. Seriously, you can find anything and everything here. Designer clothes? Check. Quirky independent boutiques? Check. Giant department stores that could take up an entire city block? Double check. Just make sure you pace yourself, all right? It's easy to get caught up in the excitement and drop a month's rent on a pair of shoes you'll wear once. Trust me, I've been there. My advice? Grab a coffee, make a plan of attack, and then dive into the madness. You might need to channel your inner Black Friday shopper to handle the crowds. But hey, no pain, no gain, right? But hold on, Union Square isn't just about emptying your wallet. It's also a hub for entertainment. We're talking theaters, art galleries, street performers doing the most to get your attention. You name it, Union Square has got it. Catch a Broadway show, marvel at some cutting edge art, or just grab a bench and watch the city go by. It's a melting pot of creativity and energy and you can feel the buzz in the air. And hey, if you're feeling fancy, grab a meal at one of the many upscale restaurants in the area. Just be prepared for some serious sticker shock when the bill arrives. Maybe stick to the food trucks if you're on a budget like me. Whatever you do, just soak it all in. Union Square is classic San Francisco, a whirlwind of activity and excitement. Just try not to spend all your money in one place. Next up on our San Francisco adventure, we're tackling the legendary Lombard Street. This isn't just any street, people. This is the most crooked street in the world. I mean, how cool is that? It's basically a roller coaster, but for cars. Now I know what you're thinking, Casey, how crooked can it really be? Let me tell you, it's way more crooked than you can imagine. It's like someone took a normal street and just went nuts with a curved tool. It's a sight to behold. And the best part? You can actually drive down it. Yeah, you heard me right. Imagine this. You're cruising down this iconic street, surrounded by beautiful flowers and charming houses. And then BAM! You're met with a line of cars moving at a snail's pace. Yup, traffic is a thing, even on the most crooked street in the world. But hey, at least it gives you time to really appreciate the scenery, right? I mean, you're basically driving through a postcard. Just try not to get too distracted by the cuteness overload and forget to steer. Once you've conquered the curves and made it to the bottom, give yourself a pat on the back. You've officially survived Lombard Street. 
Now go treat yourself to some ice cream. You earned it. All right, folks, get your cameras ready because we're about to feast our eyes on some serious architectural eye candy, the Painted Ladies of San Francisco. These Victorian beauties are like something straight out of a storybook, with their pastel colors, intricate details, and those iconic San Francisco views in the background. It's almost too picturesque to be real. I'm talking about the real deal, the ones you've seen in countless movies, TV shows, and probably even your grandma's fridge magnet collection. They're like the celebrity homes of San Francisco's architecture scene. Now here's the tough part, trying to pick a favorite. I mean, they're all so unique and charming in their own way. It's like trying to choose a favorite child. Do you go for the classic beauty with the intricate trim? Or the one with the bold color scheme that screams, look at me? Maybe you're drawn to the one with the secret garden out back? Honestly, there's no wrong answer. Just wander along the street, admire the craftsmanship, and maybe try to sneak a peek through a window. Just kidding, or am I? But seriously, take your time and soak it all in. This is one of those iconic San Francisco experiences you don't want to rush. And hey, if you can't decide on a favorite, just take a picture of them all. Your Instagram feed will thank you. All right, we've made it to number nine on our San Francisco hit list, Pier 39. This place is like the Times Square of the sea, except instead of flashing billboards, you've got sea lions barking their heads off. And trust me, they are not afraid to voice their opinions. Now you might be thinking, sea lions? On a pier? That's random. And you wouldn't be wrong. They just kind of showed up one day after the 1989 earthquake and decided to make it their own personal hangout spot. Rent's gotta be cheaper than Manhattan, right? But hey, who can blame them? This place is awesome. There's something for everyone, shops, restaurants, street performers, you name it. It's like a carnival on the water, minus the creepy carnies trying to win you a giant stuffed animal. Speaking of creepy, keep an eye on your food. Those seagulls, they're not just admiring your churro, they're plotting on it. So, you've had your fill of the sea lions if that's even possible, what else is there to do at Pier 39? Well, let me tell you, boredom is not an option here. You can jump on a boat tour and get up close and personal with Alcatraz. Don't worry, they haven't had a successful escape in decades, that we know of. Or hop on a ferry to Sausalito for some seriously stunning views of the city. It's like a postcard come to life, minus the cheesy caption. Feeling adventurous? Check out the Aquarium of the Bay and come face to fin with sharks, jellyfish, and all sorts of other underwater creatures. It's like finding Nemo, but in real life. And if you're feeling lucky, there's always the casino. Just make sure you set a budget before you go in, unless you're feeling extra lucky. Next up, we're scaling the heights of San Francisco, literally to check out Coit Tower. This Art Deco masterpiece sits atop Telegraph Hill, offering some of the most jaw-dropping panoramic views of the city. Now getting to the top is half the adventure. You can either brave the winding, uphill streets of San Francisco, which, let's be honest, is a workout and a half, or you can opt for the bus and save your energy for taking in the scenery. But trust me, the view from the top is worth every bead of sweat, every aching muscle, every, are we there yet, you mutter under your breath. You can see everything from the Golden Gate Bridge to Alcatraz Island, and everything in between. Plus, let's be real, the photos you'll get from up here, Instagram gold, just make sure your phone is fully charged. You don't want to be that person. Now, Koi Tower isn't just about the view, although it's definitely the main attraction. Inside the tower, you'll find a series of murals painted by local artists back in the 1930s. These murals depict everyday life in San Francisco during the Great Depression, and they're actually pretty incredible. It's like taking a step back in time and a reminder that even in the toughest of times, art can thrive. Plus, it's a great excuse to escape the crowds and the wind for a bit. Because let's be real, it can get pretty breezy up there. Once you've soaked in the views and admired the murals, take some time to explore the surrounding neighborhood. Telegraph Hill is full of charming cafes, quirky shops, and secret gardens just waiting to be discovered. 
And who knows, you might even stumble upon a talking parrot or two. This is San Francisco after all, anything is possible. And that's a wrap on our top places to visit in San Francisco. We hope you enjoyed the journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments which place you're most excited to visit next. Until next time, happy travels and safe adventures.